Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. In this short tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can make these Apple style speed comparison graphs and make them interactive directly in PowerPoint. So let's jump straight into it. We're going to start with a new blank presentation, right click and choose layout blank. If we right click again and go to format background, we'll create our black backfill. To save time, I'm going to quickly paste in the colors that I'm going to use for this. And now let's create the first line. So we'll just go up to the drawing section, click on line, click anywhere. If you hold down shift, it will create a straight line. And then we'll go to the line section and make it four point and a gradient line. If you click on these gradients that appear in the default, we can drag them off and that will remove them. I'm going to click on the first position, go to color, eyedropper and take my first color. Then I'll click on the second position, eyedropper, take the second color. Next, we can go to angle and make this zero. And that will just make it go directly from the light color to the dark color horizontally. Then we go to cap type and choose round which will make the ends of the line round. Again, to save time, I'm just going to quickly paste in the text I need. But for this, I've just used pop-ins and various sizes. I can now drag down the line into the right place, use the cursors to find adjust it, then hold down shift to drag the line to wherever I want it to end. And to make a copy of this line easily, and in the same X position, I can click on it, hold down Control and Shift and drag it down. Now I can hold down Shift and drag the end point wherever I want it to end. And then we'll change the colors. So everything's set in here correctly, apart from we want to just change the colors. So I can click on the first gradient stop, use the eyedropper and pick the colors. And then the second gradient stop, same again. Looking good. Let's just do the final gray one. Click Control and Shift to drag. For this one, I just use white to black, which is quite easy. So we'll just pick white on the left and then black on the right. I can now click on these and Shift click to select them all and then go to Distribute Vertically to make sure the spacing in between them is correct. And then I'm just going to draw the panel in the background. And for this, we used a rounded corner rectangle. I can drag this out, position it in the middle, use the yellow dot to slightly reduce the rounded corners. That looks good. For this, I used a gradient fill at 135 degrees. And for the gradient stop on the left, I used this color. And for the gradient stop on the right, I used this color. We also want to make sure it has no outline and then right click on the panel and choose center back. Excellent. That's looking good. Let's just quickly add the animation. So for this, the only things I want to animate are the three lines. So I can shift click to select them all. And then quite simply, just click wipe, choose effect options from left. Then go into the animation pane and choose with previous, so they all happen as soon as we look at the slide. I'm also just going to make the adjustment to this line as it was meant to be slightly shorter. That's looking good. Now let's add the interaction by duplicating the slides and adding links. So if we click on the slide, press Ctrl D, this will be our second slide. And on this one, I'm going to make this text white this text gray so we know we're on the image upscaling section then change this information drag out the bars to wherever we want to by holding down shift and adjusting the end point then we'll play from the beginning you'll see the first one and then the second one. And to make these interactive, all we have to do is click on the text, right click, 
and choose link. The default will be to an existing file or web page, but we choose place in this document and we want to link this to slide two and click OK. Now we'll go to slide two, click on the code compiling text and do the same again, but link to slide one in this case. So now when we run this, we can click on either one of these to go to that page. But you will notice that the animation doesn't start again. So there is a clever way to fix this and make the animation happen again. And to do this, we basically duplicate the first slide. Then we go to the first slide, click off the page, hold down the mouse, drag over all of these to select them and then click delete. So what this is going to do is it's going to go back to the first page and then automatically advance to the second page, which has the animation on and it forces the animation to repeat. And to automatically advance, we just go to transitions and choose after zero. And we also want to do this for slide three, which is the second of our graphs, image upscaling. So we'll click on it, press control D, then go back to the first version of these, select this and click delete. Then we go to transitions on this slide and make sure that after zero it advances. So when we play this from the beginning, you'll see the graph appear with the animation. And when you click on image upscaling, it will appear and then code compiling and it will appear. So that means that every time you click on any of these links, you'll see the animation is forced to repeat which is a really good trick when you want to make interactive PowerPoint presentations and you want the animation to appear every time. So there is a great way of making these Apple style interactive speed comparison slides directly in PowerPoint. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more, hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.